Hello everybody, I am going to talk on management of sarcoidosis. The outline of my lecture would be, first I will talk about diagnosis of sarcoidosis, then I will cover common pitfalls on in diagnosis, followed by treatment of sarcoidosis and common pitfalls in the treatment of sarcoidosis. So the diagnostic approach to sarcoidosis, the secret lies in the definition. Sarcoidosis is a systemic granulomatous disorder of unknown etiology. So the key terms are systemic granulomatous disorder and un unknown etiology. Systemic, you have to demonstrate energy which is a systemic phenomenon. Also you have to demonstrate the involvement of two or more organ systems for the disease to be called systemic. Second thing is demonstration of granulomatous inflammation that is finding of granulomas without significant necrosis in the affected organ or organ systems. Third thing is unknown etiology, for that one has to rule out the known cause of granulomatous inflammation. So the first principle is demonstration of systemic involvement. This is the world association of sarcoidosis and other granulomatous disorders, sarcoidosis organ assessment instrument. This was published in 2014. What this instrument gives is for different organ and organ systems in the body, what kind of involvement suggests a highly probable disease, least, at least probable disease, possible disease and there are certain features for this for which there is no particular consensus whether it will be definitely sarcoidosis or not. For example, in the lung, if the chest x-ray shows bilateral hilar adenopathy or CT chest shows perilymphatic nodules, if the CT chest demonstrates symmetric hilar mediastinal adenopathy or the PET or gallium 67 scan shows mediastinal hilar uh, lymphadenopathy, then the diagnosis of sarcoidosis becomes highly probable although not, it is not diagnostic of the disease. Then if chest x-ray shows diffuse infiltrates, upper lobe fibrosis or there is peribronchial thickening on the chest CT, if there is a lymphocytic alveolitis in bowel, elevated CD4 to CD8 ratio in bowel. Pet gallium showing diffuse parenchymal lung enhancement, again the disease becomes at least probable. And there are, then there are features which suggest possible disease and certain features for example restriction on a PFT or isolation reduction in diffusion capacity of carbon monoxide just suggest the disease and there was no consensus regarding these features. So energy is a systemic phenomenon which is noticed in sarcoidosis and for that the tuberculin skin test that is the MANTU test is still practically the most useful test for demonstrating it in patients with sarcoidosis. So in a paper from our center, uh, the interferon gamma release assay, quantiferon TB golden tube.